Hello everyone, this is Adhya Malik and today we are going to do the one act play from the first year English compulsory course called Progress. Please remember that this is the course for the year 2020 and 2021 and the textbook is prescribed by the KPK textbook board. So this is part one of the video. So first of all we are going to uh, know something about the writer. The writer is John Gray Irwin. So, He's also called St. John Gray Irwin. He was born in 1883 and died in 1971. He was an Irish biographer, so he belonged to Ireland. He was a novelist, critic, dramatist and theatre manager. So he had a lot of hats. Uh, he was the most prominent Ulster writer of the early 20th century and a major Irish dramatist. After the World War I, he settled in London and became a drama critic for the newspaper called The Observer. Alongside his plays, Irwin wrote a number of novels as well. His most successful novel was uh, Wayward Man, published in 1927. He has also produced several major biographies, including of William Booth, of Oscar Wilde, and George Bernard Shaw. So, because he is Irish, um, a lot of Irish elements are there in his play as well. So, let's see what the play is about. But because the background of the play is World War I, so we are going to uh, talk about a little about World War One, when it started and when it ended. So the World War One, also known as the First World War, was a global war centered in Europe, basically, that began on 28 July 1914 and lasted until 11th November 1918. The war lasted exactly four years, three months and 14 days. And that's a long time, especially if you have um, almost all of the countries from the continent of Europe fighting each other. And so it was the first bloody uh, war that the human civilization saw, especially after uh, the invention of the modern weapons. Before World War II began in 1939, World War I was called the Great War. The World War or the World War uh, or the War to End All Wars. 135 countries took part in World War I and more than 15 million people died. So this is the extensive damage that the World War I did. And look at the countries that were involved, almost all of the world. That is why it is called the World War. 65 million troops were mobilized during the war. 8 million troops died and 21 million troops were wounded. 58,000 British soldiers were lost on the first day at the Battle of Somme. Chemical weapons were first used in World War I and the chemical was mustard gas. So even in the title page, you can see that uh, here... They are using this gas and these were the first biological weapons that were used and you used to kill people instantly because they could not breathe. So that was the first time that uh, these things were out there and people began to know how horrific these uh, things can be. So now talking about uh, the plot and the setting. The setting is in the remote village in the north of England and it's a day in spring 1919. So the world has, uh, the world war has just ended almost. So it's a remote village in the north of England. So what is the plot? Plot is more like a summary of the whole story. Uh, Professor Corey has invented a bomb that would kill millions in one go. He is happy about his invention and dreams of getting rich and famous. Mrs. Meldon lost her son three years ago in World War I and recently found out the horrific way in which her son was blown to pieces by a bomb. She tries to dissuade. Dissuade means convince not to do something. Corey from adding misery to the world when he refuses to give up on the idea of a poisonous bomb, she stabs him to death. So Mrs. Melton is Professor Corey's only sister and uh, she is a widow plus she has also lost her son in the war. So she is all against war but when she realizes that Professor Corey is actually making weapons that would make uh, the war even bloodlier and uh, it's going to make it more horrific. So First, she tried to convince him, but when she was he was not convinced, he uh, she killed him. So, characters are Dr. Henry Corey. He is a scientist, and she is the brother. Uh, he is the brother of Charlotte Meldon. Mrs. Charlotte Meldon. Uh, she is Dr. Corey's sister. Then there is Tom Meldon and Eddie. These two characters don't uh, come on stage. They are referred to because both of them had died. So, uh, Tom Meldon is Charlotte's deceased husband, and Eddie is Charlotte's son who died in the war. Hannah is the maid. She is the housemaid and he she often comes on and off stage. But your main characters are only two, Dr. Henry Corey and Mrs. Charlotte Meldon. So, uh, as far as the theme is concerned, it's an anti-war play and it's about abolition. Abolition means uh, 
total stoppage, uh, seizing something. Abolition of war means that there should not be any war in this world. The conflict is between Dr. Corey and Mrs. Meldon, as far as the personalities are concerned. But if you look at the ideology, there is a conflict between ideologies as well. So the conflict is between somebody who is warmonger, who, se who is selling war and uh, making profit out of it, and the person who loves peace. So there is an ideological conflict between uh, these two characters as well. Now, summary, I have already given you it in the shape of the plot, but just to elaborate it a little bit more, Dr. Henry Corey is a scientist who rejoices. Rejoices means that he is celebrating over his invention as it can destroy a vast city in a few seconds. So he is not uh, thinking of it from a human point of view. He is thinking from it from a profit point of view that he is going to make millions if he sells this weapon to some army. He says that his invention will make war in future over in a few hours. So instead of fighting for years and years without any result, these kind of bombs are going to destroy cities in a second and the war would be decided in just a few hours. He is also proud that the success of the war will depend on who strikes first and what kind of weapons he uses. Mrs. Meldon gently reminds him that his invention will lead to the death of hundreds of young men like her son Eddie. But he ignores her words and gloats over his invention and the fame and wealth. So he is very insensitive. He doesn't realize that the weapon kills human beings. It doesn't really matter whether the person is dying on this side of the border or that side of the border. It's still a human loss. But he is just thinking about his fame and the wealth. He says that if he will sell his bomb to the government, which grants him the highest amount of money. So he he's not even patriotic. He's saying that he would sell his bomb to any government that pays him well. So he is not saying that I have made the bomb for the English government because he is English himself, so he should be patriotic towards his country. But he is saying that whatever, whichever government pays him more, he is going to sell it uh, to that government. When Mrs. Meldon is convinced that her brother will not suppress his invention at any cost, she decides to do away with him along with his invention. He destroys the sheet of paper on which Cory has written the formulae. But Cory is not upset at all. He says that the formula remains embedded in his brain and he can reproduce them easily. So he says that destroying a piece of paper doesn't really matter because he remembers the formula by heart so he can reproduce it. Mrs. Melton cannot tolerate his inhumanity anymore. When he stoops to pick up the sheet, she stabs him on the back with a knife and kills him. She feels that this is a justifiable revenge against the murderer of her son on the occasion of his death anniversary. So she feels that she was justifiable, although she has just taken the life of her own brother, but she feels that she has saved millions of innocent people from a horrible death. So if you look at the progress of how the plot goes, so this is going to move like this. So Professor Corey invents a bomb formula. He does so for fame and fortune. Mrs. Melton, Professor's widow sister, is in mourning for the third death anniversary of her son. So on the very day her son died three years ago, an army captain died in the First World War. Professor pays ne uh, negligence to her bereavement and breaks the news of his invention. So he's totally insensitive. He doesn't realize that today is the death anniversary of Eddie, but he keeps on talking about his invention. Mrs. Meldon recalls her cheerful past with husband Tom and Eddie. She does so to make Professor feel the value of relations and wretchedness on losing them. So she makes him realize that, you know, what happens when you lose a family member, but he is totally inhumane. Professor's belief war will never end encourages him to pro promote his invention as his devastating results are far more rapid than the old weapons and he sees he says that the wars are not going to end even if i don't make a weapon somebody else is going to make a weapon and there are going to be wars in future because it's all about money and profit etc so it doesn't really matter charlotte Corey's sister informs him eddie had been mutilated by a shell so uh, she abominates wars and organized butchery of boys so she calls war butchery of boys it doesn't really matter who is losing them they are sons of mothers on both sides of the border so uh, she talks about uh, the thing but obviously uh, professor is not listening he's talking about money and fame etc charlotte pleads to professor to destroy the bomb as eddie's memorial but professor stays indifferent to her pleading and she hurls the table and the formula uh, spills on the floor mrs meldon's such act is uh, derided by professor that he, the formula is in his mind so he remembers it 
This infuriates her so that she stabs him in the back with a long knife and the professor dies. So this is the plot in a nutshell in nine little slides. Now looking at the professor, uh, this was one of the pictures that I found over the internet. So maybe in one of the theatrical representation, this is how Professor Quarry looked like. So if you look at all these little uh, bullets over here, the little charts or little uh, buttons, you can see that these are his characteristics. Number one, he's a person between 50 and 60 years. Uh, he's a bachelor. He's not married. He's a scientist. He specializes in making bombs. So he's basically a biological weapons expert. So he can make bombs which have gases in them. And those gases can kill people instantly. He's very cruel and heartless. So he does not really care whether the sister has lost the son. And that very day was the death anniversary of his nephew. But he's just thinking about his profit. He's greedy and selfish. So he's all about money. Whoever pays him well. Looking for fame and money. So he's thinking that my bomb is going to make me very famous. He's even unpatriotic. He's saying that I have not made this bomb for England. If England is not going to buy the bomb from me, I'm going to sell it to anybody who pays me well. He believes that war is ine inevitable. Inevitable means that you can't stop war. So he believes that there's always going to be a war somewhere. So you can't stop it. He despises women. So he's a misogynist also. His view of women is very low, very pathetic. He believes that they are useless creatures. They are sentimental creatures. They can't study anything. They are not knowledgeable at all. He is a pro-war person. He is a warmonger. Warmonger means he sells war. So he makes the war more like a business. He is insensitive towards his own sister's tragedy. Somebody who would be insensitive to his own sister, can you imagine that he would feel for humanity? Of course not. So that uh, relationship with his sister shows that how uh, selfish and self-centered he is. Now looking at Mrs. Meldon because she is the other character. She is 43 years old. She is a widow so she has lost the husband as well. Lost her only son Eddie in World War I. She is very sensitive looking. She is wearing black as a sign of mourning. So when she comes on stage she is wearing black because that day was the death anniversary of her son. The third death anniversary of her son. She is very motherly and dignified, not only uh, motherly towards her own son, but she feels motherly to all the soldiers fighting in the war and uh, especially the people, uh, the sons or the young boys who are going to lose their life because she feels for their mothers also. She values human life more than money and fame. She is anti-war and a pacifist. Pacifist is a person who loves peace. She is very humane. She doesn't war, want war at all. She terms war as the organized butchery of boys. So she is not taking sides. She believes that when a mother loses a son, it doesn't really matter if it's a German mother or an English mother or a French mother because the loss is the same. She despises weapons. She does not want weapons in this world. She tries very hard to convince Corey to destroy his invention. So she tries very politely first, but then she realizes that the professor is not going to listen to her and then kills her own brother to save millions from horrible death. That was a very difficult choice that she had to make, but she did not have any choice at all. So it was either Professor Corey lives and the millions of people die, or it was if she kills Corey and the millions of people are saved. So she ultimately decides to take the life of uh, her own brother. So that was the biggest sacrifice that she could do in order to abolish war and to destroy a very dangerous weapon uh, from getting in the hands of people that would use it on other countries and on other people and kill millions and millions more. So she is the anti-war person. She is the pacifist. Uh, she is against war. Whereas Dr. Corey, his own brother, her own brother, he is a warmonger. He is pro-war. He is a somebody who believes that war cannot be stopped. So these are the character sketches, summary and your uh, plot structure. So please like the video, comment if you have any questions, share it with your friends and also subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.